when you play my kind of game, there's a rhythm that is not the same game as like somebody who's like staying in the baseline. You know, when I attack, there's like a rhythm to it. So, and sometimes I would have like songs while I was playing. So there was always a kind of music, you know, music when you travel, there's always like a music that, you know, is from home, you know, especially when you travel every week in a different place. There's always like the music that reminds you of home. So I was always into singing, you know, always into singing, always, always, always. <laughs> Ali was this superstar, world superstar. Uh, he had a message, he had a mis mission. He was a peaceful warrior. He was a simple man. He was, you could, you could see him, you could talk to him. He didn't walk around with sunglasses and hundreds of bodyguards. He was my hero. He was a human being, and, uh, and he, you know, he was the man. If I had to choose one, which is really always difficult to choose only one, there are so many good ones, but he, if I had to choose one, you know, there's no, for sure it would give up. <laughs> First, you know, my, my Grand Slam tournament in, in Paris, it's joy, you know, you are happy, but you look around and you see actually people who are really happy, you know, you can share this moment with people. With music, it's not that direct, you know, and that powerful right away, but to, you know, to walk around and just hear the song and see kids dancing about the song, with a smile, you know, then you participate in something too. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was always, I was always very happy to see kids dancing on my tune. The first album was like more like a, a beautiful accident. You know, I just, I was just retired from tennis and I had a friend who was working in a studio and uh, he said, you know, come over, you know, I have some music. Um, we just need some, you know, someone to sing on it, you know, so just come and try it, you know. So I just went and I just put the, all this on and uh, get into the studio, start singing. And I thought, God, you know, it sounds so good, you know, with the music, you know, and stuff. So I kept coming, you know, every day and, you know, and then one day he said, you know what, you know, you've been, you've been writing all these things, you know, improvising a lot. We have a lot of tapes. We have about seven or eight songs, you know, maybe if you do another two or three, we can have an album. And one thing led to the other, we had an album. The first song was like a hit for some reason. The first was a hit in France. And, um, and I went on, it went on like that. So all of a sudden we said, hey, what's going on? You know, that was not expected. So um, then we did a second album and then I, I wanted to like perform and spend more time on stage and sing, you know, that's like actually what I like, is just actually sing, you know, so we, um, we went on the road and uh, went on the bus, you know, we had nine of us on the bus and we, we had, we had uh, uh, 49 uh, stops, you know, in France, so that was like a beautiful experience, you know, playing every day in different places. Uh, funny, funny story, one day we were playing in Metz, which is the east of France, and uh, we played in front of 6,000 people. And then the next day we, we drove to Brittany, uh, you know, all night and most of the morning and we played in front of eight people. <laughs> you know, so that was, that was like a shock. But both concerts were very good and a lot of fun. <laughs> I try, for example, if I do like a song, I try to always try to do it a different way. I don't, I never do the same way. So it's no, there's no competition. I'm not competing. Competition was this disease that I had to live with, you know, for 20 years. And now I don't feel it. And 
when I can be on stage with Matt, for example, who's playing guitar and can sing too, it's a, it's a way to share, you know. All of a sudden, yeah, we used to try to beat each, each other, and now we're actually sharing, you know, we're together, sharing a moment, playing together in order to create something, you know, and this is the best part. You cannot live, you know, through people's expectations, you know, you, you know, I always tried, you know, and when I went there, I tried, you know, I would have been frustrated if I look back and said, God, I didn't try, you know, I tried, you know, and that was my limit, you know, yeah, I have had my limits, you know, I look back, I said, God, here, I was a little lazy here this time of my life, or, or maybe I sometimes I think, you know, my priorities were like way out and somewhere else. You know, I can look back and feel this way, but at the end, you know, coming from a house in Cameroon with no electricity, no water, to end up being a professional tennis player, playing all over the world and be only number three, it's a, it's a long way, you know, it's a long, it was a long way. And if I have to do it again, I don't know if I'll be able to do it this well, you know, it was a lot, a lot of work. So yes, you know, you, you know, you can come back, look back, and say, "Oh, I wish I was number two. Yeah, but I could have been number one hundred too, you know. And I, I, there's a lot of number ten or fifteen that should have the same amount of respect, you know, people. And that it's like this all the time, you know. It's like so funny and so funny to watch people treat other people different because they're number one, they're number three, they're rich, they're poor. You, you've been, tr you're treated different because of so many reasons that, you know, and the, the real reason should be, you know, you're treated for the way you are, for who you are, you know, and, uh, and yes, I've, I've been only number three, and, but I've had so many beautiful lessons through this career, you know, it was such a beautiful ride, such a beautiful ride. So privileged, you know, at 15, 20, 25, to just go around the world with your little weapon, the racket, you know, a game, you know. It's such a beautiful life, you know.